Hello. Now that the greeting is done and I have your full undivided attention, Super Mario 64 Beyond the Cursed Mirror is a ROM hack made by Rovert slash Tubert slash Rovertronic. It was the winner for the SM64 hack of 2023, and although I haven't played the other nominees that were included in the awards show besides Dog Collab, which is also another great one to play, and man, when I think back to when I did play through that hack, I can probably understand how conflicted the voters were when making their votes when deciding who should be the winner for that type of reward. Other than that, Dog Collab will get its own ROM hack video, sure enough, in the sometime foreseen future. So for right now, it's just about Beyond the Cursed Mirror. So right out of the gate, the flair this game starts out with, having a unique looking file select screen compared to the vanilla SM64 one, but not only does it stop there, because upon selecting a file, you're presented with a rainy, gloomy camera panning around, around the surroundings towards Peach's castle, and then revealing a Facebook default profile moon within the night sky with some dialogue to boot. Then back to the superstar himself, reading a note that led him to return to the castle grounds. And even there at the beginning, the pause menu sporting a new look, new tab menus with options that give some quality of life changes, like um, 16 by nine widescreen, you know? If you have that monitor type, I'd implore you to use it. Why waste your money just to have black borders in the year of 2024? Come on now, get with the times. Make use of what the decomp was able to bless us with. But back to the gameplay. The castle grounds that is familiar to the oh so many that have played it of old, but now it's in a sorry state and entering it is anything but familiar. Looking more of something out of a creepypasta of the old early 2000s interwebs with the attention of detail where everything inside is dark and dead. Meanwhile, the vine poking out through the broken ceiling is bright, as well as the pathing that leads you in the right direction where the game wants you to go. You'll find yourself in the mirror room just to have some evil Mario dynamite kick what was thought to be a mirror, which was really a glass window. I gotta say though, the physics to it is a pretty cool addition, even though it is just a small and probably a one-time thing. Just don't actually play with glass like this in real life, please. But from there, you get a tutorial of what the game has to offer from new additions that have been implemented here. The camera that makes use of the D-pad buttons, giving you a more smoother camera feel. The upgrade system that will cost you coins and star powers as you go and collect them throughout the lands. The one out of many storefronts that will be present in various places throughout the game. The badge system akin to Mario Story 64 with badge points as a limiter. The wallet system for things you can buy and even have a little testing ground for the implemented inertia which is a great thing to know that the game has when it comes down to platforming games such as super mario 64 which usually isn't the case to have but yes having that added momentum for your movements based on the objects in which they are moving and all that sort of directional inputs and stuff you know super smash bros type pro gamer stuff After going through the ropes, you get a bit of a story and a bit of a spotlight too, but the story is basically the showrunner here right before Mario is a piece of a bigger mastermind at hand, and he'll be the main antagonist for the time being. And true to his name, the showrunner is the one to have Mario running around many worlds you'll be going through, and while you go more deeper and deeper into the game, things gradually go from as bright as the color of red flowing hot lava filled lands with the expected environments you'd expect of a volcano, a floating in the sky farm ranch that while has no explanation to why it's able to float, the area has what you'd expect to see when going around a ranch with the added in Super Mario worldly elements. And speaking of Super Mario world, you get a dino dino land where you have a prehistoric theming with cavemen tribe people and even Yoshi makes his return but his writing animation is a little bit on the wonky look inside and definitely not the safest but that's just a minor nitpick for me but as you all probably noticed because of the gameplay clips and whatnot by the looks of mario not being mario anymore around each level in some areas in the hub you can find these icons spread about just like the wallets and although the outfits are purely cosmetics yahooing around and about as a hard-working milkman darius feels so much better and even playing as the true hero luigi himself also the hub itself as i've skipped over is pretty fitting to the story at hand here you got a whole studio vibe 
vibe setting to it all with cameras against the walls recording your every movements the changing room i already shown for the different outfits there's a movie truck leading out the back just waiting for an action-packed highway scene with fast movements and steady platforming to be had a green screen in the corner of this room and even a chill break room with a fireplace to relax at and maybe even listen to the various tunes you'll come to hear while you're venturing forth in this major rom hack adventure super mario 64 beyond the cursed mirror is a game that feels like something that could stand the test of time and considering how vanilla the controls and gameplay actually are but with the addition of badges that can enhance the gameplay and the multitude of them to select from being that of modern mario game like features of the sticky wall jumping as the most helpful badge that you can have equipped it to the most challenging types that upon death you have your save file deleted Man, I may be a masochist, but even I know that's cruel. Mamma mia! The breakaway of vanilla powers like wing, metal, and even the vanish caps for a more overpowered rocket boots that allow for a more overpowered flight with a fuel gauge, but a still fun way fleshing out what we've come to know about the nerf Super Mario World cape all for the wing cap version of the Super Mario 64 that was introduced in the 90s in the van in the vanetto in the vanetto cap being vanished and metal cap used including the word which is hard to really pronounce but overall it feels more natural given the submarine level in Super Mario 64 which had the boxes there and I wouldn't believe you if you said you never tried to mix those two together not even once in your whole entire playthrough but in truth I could go on and on about this ROM hack and for all the good reasons too. The experience this hack fills you with is something of a certain joy even though in the backgrounds you're always being constantly watched by the floating entity in the sky and as much childlike wonder this game has inside of it for the feeling it brings, remembering that there is a story being told or at least guided. It's hard to really consider what's actually happening with everything that the showrunner has led the superstar here for and with how dark this journey gets into later levels it's very undertale like where you're just having a fun time playing a little video game and while mario has to do his mario thing collecting stars and dark stars in order to progress on reading the dialogue with their further lore explaining details it just feels like it's a mario is a good guy but the normal good guy shenanigans are a detriment to everyone around him but mario just like frisk and undertale has no true control nor choice in the matter because we the player are the ones going against the grain and just for our sheer enjoyment and entertainment the characters within this world have to suffer and all that the dark stars represents are a means for those that are summoned by the black boxes to face off against the hero in this game just to try and stop him from causing a more bigger collateral damage making those same boss like enemies the true heroes in this story and mario the true villain man that's deep, bro. Also, there's many, many games to be played. Lots of balls, seemingly as a test to see how much can be contained and what maximum amount a Nintendo 64 can handle and even the Toho Bad Apple black and white music videos here. Which would probably also explain some of the inspiration for some of the bosses' battle attack patterns. But I'm sure things will be fine. Beyond the Cursed Mirror was a great time to play through twice, and I feel like with everything considered, it definitely deserves its place as a hack of 2023 for Super Mario 64 ROM hacks, of course, or at least until I find time to play the other nominees to determine if I feel differently about that, but who knows? Try this out for yourself. Even when you beat the game, there's some goodies to be had afterwards that make the replay value even more enjoyable and even a new game plus mode to partake in that seems like a sort of randomizers or something of sort. So yeah, there's also that. And also for the console purist, yes, this game has a rating of excellent when it comes down to its compatibility for the actual Nintendo 64 console itself. So load up your EverDrive SD cards and insert your expansion packs and enjoy this great creation by Robertronic and make sure to stay tuned to his channel for more of what he has to offer especially for his upcoming Mario in the Multiverse hack he's been working on. Now if you excuse me I need to try out those other ROM hack nominees and also thanks for watching. Nighty nighty. Ah spaghetti. Ah ravioli. Ah.
mamma mia!